Um, now, thinking back, there are one or two little things that uh, you might like to know that I mis overlooked in my previous recordings. For example, on the, I told you about the, when I was on the cruise of Southampton up in uh, Norway, Narvik. And uh, in those days, the only part of the year, uh, war, um, we didn't have life belts, personal life belts. They weren't issued to us. Uh, that came later, one of these things you put around your chest and blew it up, you know. But we didn't have those at that time. So uh, myself and um, my opposite number on the, on the twin gun, you know, loader, loaders, we had our own plank of wood because just uh, in the midships part of where the guns were, there was all this um, uh, big planks of wood and, and so on for if, in the event if you got damaged, you could use it for shoring up, you know. And we had our name carved in one of these big planks of wood. Charlie and Bogey, his name was Bogey Knight. And the event that we sank, that was our bit of wood where we were going to grab and uh, hopefully float around until somebody picked us up. That was one little recollection. And uh, another little rec uh, recollection was when I was on the mill, and I told you about that. And um, I told you also that the job I had on there was... Uh, the right arm man, if you like, or aide to the captain, very senior captain. And uh, I used to walk around after him, I told you this on the previous uh, uh, occasion, and uh, report, repeat all his orders. Anyway, when we were uh, on the ship itself, the king decided he was going to visit the ships, Royal Navy ships, and um, us being the senior one, as we call it, Captain D, and uh, uh, he came on board our ship and we did a little trip with him out to sea and it was during the, uh, the autumn so it was a bit rough and stormy so my captain said to me before he, uh, he came on oh you better get one of my raincoats take that with you in the event that he might need it on the bridge and put out to sea so um, anyway we went out to sea and I followed up the captain who was behind the king up to the bridge and we shoved it off and uh, went to sea and then lo and behold it started blowing a bit and went raining so my captain turned around and looked at me and nodded so I had my coat walked up and said uh, your coat please sir to the king and he said oh thank you and I put the coat on his back and everything else no he didn't knight me but I was going to say you should have asked for a knighting <laughs> he didn't knight me but it, it, it's, it's a thought really that I had the honour of being able to do that mm -hmm. um, so there we are uh, uh, oh yeah another little thought uh, I, think I told you in fact that on the, again going back to the HMS Southampton the cruiser we were in the Firth of Fulth anchored just by the, um, on this occasion, by the Firth of Fourth Bridge. And um, I was laying on the up there with the rest of the boys uh, in safe harbour as we thought, uh, sunbathing. And I heard this end of a machine gun fire and banging and cracking. And he looked up and he's these blooming German bombers. And we found out after what they were after doing was um, to hit the uh, they put these thousand pounds uh, bombs that had uh, delayed action fuses on them and the idea being obviously was to get to the foundations of the Firth of Fourth Bridge and blow it up but of course I hadn't anticipated or didn't know about the warships were in there so we were finally putting them, we shot quite a number of them down but one of them dropped his thousand pound bomb at us and it hit the bridge, went right through the bridge through three decks and out the ship's side before it burst just above the water line and um, blew, blew a great hole you know, blew in blew it back inside uh, the, uh, the thought that came to me uh, as I was thinking about this was that was my first casualty uh, or in death anyway death that I, I'd see and this guy happened to be one of my mess he was a boy well, Bradley, I remember his name. Uh, he was a boy who I sit down mess. And apparently he, he was going down to action stations, as it was then, you know. 
He was going down to the magazine where he was, and he was on the level of the deck where the bomber came through the ship's side, and it blew the ship's side large portions of it in, and partly sent the back of his head, killed him instantly, smashed all his skull in. <coughs> and I remember after all this had happened, just shortly afterwards, I went down and I looked through the manhole to look at the deck and the surgeon and doctors and other officers were standing around the boy. He was laid out on one of the mess tables, seeing what they could do, but there's nothing they could do and I think, oh, well, terrible. <laughs> so I knew. But that was just another little thought that I hadn't thought about. No doubt other things will come to me <laughs> that I haven't got down here. But um, it'll give you the gist of what went on anyway and what uh, uh, your dad's life was about, or your granddad's life, or your great granddad's life. <laughs> but, um, great great granddad's life. <laughs> but just a little thought to bear in mind, lads and lasses. Uh, it was a tough life uh, throughout the war, not only for me, for many others. Poor Aunt Annie Mee, if you remember. Um, lost her husband, my father, you know, he was only young, 39. And Harry being shot down uh, uh, out in the Mediterranean and uh, then picked up and ended up, he reported missing. And then he ended up in Germany as a prisoner of war. So a lot of people went through rough times. But I never regret any of it. I consider myself very fortunate and very lucky. But what I did learn throughout this was never get depressed, never give up. Life is very important and you've got to use it and live to the full every day. Plan for the future uh, in expect expectancy that you, you can do well, be happy and always do that. Always bear that in mind. As I've said to you many times, if you feel you'd like to do something, do it. If it turns out right, marvellous. If it goes wrong, tough. But you've at least tried it. And you would have learned from that. And then you don't have to look back on life and think, I wish I'd done this or I wish I'd done that because you've tried, done them all and tried them. All right, lads, lasses, all of it. I know you're always going to be happy and when I'm around you can always come to me for any advice that I may or may not be able to give you. Bye bye now, love you all.